What's up YouTube, it's Saint, and uh, I know, typically a PvP guy, not normally an, a lore guy, but I, I, this drives me crazy. I have to, I have to talk about it. This line of dialogue. This was once a safe haven for hunters. A workshop where hunters used blood to enhance their weapons and flesh. We don't have as many tools as we once did, but you're welcome to use whatever you find. Even the doll, should it please you. Even the doll, should it please you. The community's like interpretation of this line of dialogue is like somehow perverse or sexual in nature drives me crazy because it's actually horrifying. Uh, among the first hunters, all students of Gehrman, was the lady hunter, Maria. This was her hunter's garb, crafted in Canehurst. She's distantly related to the undead queen, but had great admiration for Gehrman, unaware of his curious mania. So this lady Maria, she was a, a student of Gehrman. Hmm, interesting. And Gehrman had some sort of a weird mania? What, what, what's going on there, I wonder? Well, if we do what Gehrman says and we ascend to Uden Chapel, uh, we can make our way to the highest stratum of the healing church and uh, we can find the choir and these are the, the big wigs of spoiler alert they're all dead it doesn't matter if we hang a left instead and we follow along this path we can uh, with some careful footing make a few drop downs and we can find ourselves an abandoned old workshop. Now this abandoned old workshop is the real world location of uh, the hunter's dream or rather it's what the hunter's dream is modeled off of this abandoned old workshop. This is a place where as Gearman says the hunters would hang out, they would uh, forge their weapons, improve their weapons, and uh, you know their flesh as well, make themselves stronger. They probably hung out here and just talked about monsters that they had killed. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. But what does matter is we find a treasure chest. Just one, just a simple locked chest uh, with some doll clothes uh, that state that we can surmise a deep love of the doll from the fine craftsmanship of that article and the care with which it was kept. It borderlines on mania. We can also find a small hair ornament, which says that it was taken care of very, very specially. Uh, you know, despite all the years, it's still in great shape, and it would stand out brilliantly against a head of grayish hair. Uh, while we're here, we can also find um, an abandoned doll. The same abandoned doll that inhabits the hunter's dream. Uh, except here, uh, it's not mm, sentient, I guess? <laughs> Keep in mind, it's only sentient in the hunter's dream if we have insight, but once we've interacted with it, we can always interact with it. We will also notice that there are no linings of headstones um, around the old abandoned workshop. Instead, there's just one. There's just one headstone, and on top of that headstone, we find the old hunter bone which tells us that it belonged to one of Gehrman's students. Now, the item description uses a male pronoun to uh, describe this person, but we know that in the Japanese translation, it's a gender-neutral pronoun to describe this person. The doll will also, in the hunter's dream, hang out at this exact headstone and say a prayer to it. This is the headstone of Lady Maria. This is Lady Maria's uh, grave marker. Is her body here? I doubt it. But, uh, you know, someone thought enough to turn this old hunter's workshop into a shrine for this dead hunter, Lady Maria. So later in the game, we can actually meet Lady Maria, and she stands to bridge a divide between the Healing Church and Bergenworth. She stands at the very tippy top of the Astral Clock Tower over the Research Hall where the Healing Church did terrible experiments on the, the people of Yarnum. Just absolute horror stuff, okay? But she also stands in the way of us understanding what happened at the fishing hamlet and the horrors committed by the school, Bergenworth. Lady Maria is awful. She's a terrible person, okay? No getting around it. She did terrible things at the fishing hamlet, she did terrible things at the research hall. Now you could argue that, you know, she was trying to offer comfort to those at the healing church, 
uh, the, I'm sorry, the research hole. And, you know, yeah, sure, we find her Rikuyo uh, in the fishing hamlet, and it says that Lady Maria absolutely loved this weapon, which originated from Kanehurst, uh, but it didn't feed off of blood, instead it demanded high dexterity. But one day she abandoned her beloved weapon, casting it into a dark well when she could stand to stomach its presence no longer. And all of the research hall patient, patients have very nice things to say about Lady Maria. So yes, she did feel guilt. She felt terrible about all the terrible things that she had done, which she should have. Good hunter, have I somehow changed moments ago from some place, perhaps deep within. I sensed a liberation from heavy shackles. Not that I would know how passing strange <laughs> so there's a ton of cut content regarding how Maria died, but it's all cut from what? the game. And I have to what stress this. this. Cut content is not just I, cut out of a game because I the developer didn't remember. have time or money to put not it the in the game. Sometimes cut content is cut because they didn't the like it. They didn't want it. They thought, hey, before. we changed our mind. This is bad. Let's not What's use it. The idea of how Lady Maria died, Tell I guess it doesn't hunter. really matter, but I choose Could to interpret it as she unalived, uh, uninstalled herself. Um, it doesn't really matter. All that matters is that she died. Garman feels intense guilt about this, and in a state of manic depression, creates a weird doll uh, to, to sort of try and alleviate this guilt he feels. Unfortunately for Garman, the great ones that inhabit the nightmare are sympathetic in spirit and often answer when called upon. So, in order for us to discuss this, we have to discuss the very nature of what cosmic horror is. This will just take a minute, and I promise it's actually pretty cool, I think. So, cosmic horror is not just a, a story about a weird squid man who lives in a lake. Cosmic horror is about uh, a human mind coming to grips with the fact that it's so small and inconsequential and there are things beyond its comprehension. Like, you could not comprehend these things. How do you illustrate this for someone who's reading? Imagine an ant. And imagine you walk outside one day, there's an ant colony outside your house. You know a lot about ants for some reason. And you're like, oh, it's those types of ants. You go for a walk, and two miles down the road, you run across a single solitary ant. And you know that it's one of those ants uh, from the colony. You know it's the same type of ant. Now, the ant can in no way perceive your existence. It can, however, recognize things that you do to affect its world. So, for example, if you picked up this ant that was two miles away from its uh, colony and you just walked it back to its colony and you dropped it off, uh, the ant would have no way of understanding well, what exactly had happened other than the fact that it was far away. For it, maybe like a two-week long journey. For you, like a 14-minute walk. Um, but now it's back. It was one place. Something strange happened. Now it's back where it lives. Okay, if for even one moment of any of that, the ant understood a fraction, just a fraction, of what had happened, if for a fraction of a second, anything had made just an ounce of sense to that ant, that's cosmic horror. The ant has received data that it doesn't know how to interpret, but it knows that things did happen, and it has no way to express this to the other ants in the colony. And the other ants in the colony are all going to think he's insane, uh, and it probably will drive the ant insane, trying to figure out what happened, and understanding that there are things beyond his comprehension. That's Cosmic Horror, uh, it, as easy as I can do it for you, alright? And that's what separates Cosmic Horror from just a squid guy who lives in a lake. That's not Cosmic Horror, that's just horror. Anyway. So we have this moon presence that oversees this hunter's dream, and it sees a sad, depressed, manic old man who feels guilt about the death of his most beloved student, and just brought his doll to life. Just gave life to the physical embodiment of this man's grief. And it's important to remember that this moon presence has no idea how this ant ended up two miles away from its colony. It doesn't understand that. It just knows that it doesn't belong there. This moon presence just understands that he's sad and that he built a weird doll to make himself feel better. B brings it to life. 
But that's the last thing any human person would ever want is to sit around in a, in a state of psychosis, just lunatic, and build this weird doll as a totem to the grief and guilt that you feel for having drugged this sweet child into a life of murder where it oversaw not one but two mass scale crimes against humanity. And this moon presence has just brought it to life. Even the doll, should it please you. He's not sexually attracted to this. He's terrified of it. <laughs> Thank you for indulging me later, y'all.